Hey guys, welcome back. Well, I thought I'd share with you a couple of observations that I made uh, during some imaging while the moon was out and at full strength. I was just doing some narrow band imaging, so I thought I'd be relatively safe, but uh, I found out that I was wrong once again, as is the usual case, and I just thought I'd share these results with you. Let's go over to PixInsight, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so on the left, as you can tell, is the image of the Sol Nebula, and on the right is the image of the California Nebula, and they're taken almost at exactly the same time. Of course, we need to do a screen stretch. But you can see the HA, a little bit of the HA data in this uh, last sub that I took of the Sol Nebula. And if you'll see this, it's at about at November 1st, around almost 9 o'clock. And then after I completed that image, I slewed over to the California Nebula and started imaging after a, an autofocus in Nina. And this is what we have for the result. And I was quite... Uh, surprised by this by this result because over here while the off-axis guider shadow was is certainly present uh, over here it is striking and also if you zoom in on this you can tell that there are some additional image artifacts for example uh, it doesn't show up probably as well in a single sub but there's a, some additional circular type image artifacts that are strewn about this image that are not present in this image over here on the Sol Nebula, and yet this image here, this California image, Nebula image, was taken at 9.07 p.m., and this was taken at about 8.57. You know, not much difference between the two, just within 10 minutes of each other. And what was even more surprising, because when I saw this image, that didn't compare at all to what I had seen the first time, a couple of days before this, when I was imaging the California Nebula, so I was really wondering what the heck was going on. Well, I think we can answer that question uh, quite conclusively if we go over to Stellarium and see what the relative positions of the Sol Nebula, the California Nebula, and the Moon were at the time. All right, so I have the Stellarium frozen here at 9 o'clock, which is basically the time just in between when those two images were taken that we were just looking at. We have the date at 11, uh, November 1st at 9 o'clock. Here is the Sol Nebula, so this is the image on the left that we were looking at in PixInsight, and here's the California Nebula, the image on the right that we were looking at in PixInsight. And then you'll notice here's the moon, and at this time the moon is full illumination at the minus 12 magnitude. We're getting the full effect of the moon here. Now, so what we want to do is measure the distance, the angular distance between the moon and the California Nebula and the moon and the Sol Nebula to try to get an idea, when are we too close even to use narrowband filters with a full-on bright moon. And for that, Stellarium has a very handy tool called the Angular Measure Tool. And if you don't have this installed, you just go over to the Configuration dialog here, go to Plugins, scroll down until you find the Angle Measure. And if you don't have it installed, this won't be checked. Check it, then get out of Stellarium, restart Stellarium, and the Angle Measure tool will be present on the uh, toolbar down below. So that's all you have to do. To use that, we activate the tool by clicking on it, so it's highlighted now. And I can come over here, and from the Sol Nebula to the Moon, I can measure, and that comes out to be about 44 degrees angular separation between the Moon and the Sol Nebula, and I wasn't seeing any real artifacts that I couldn't take care of with flats. On the other hand, I was seeing quite a few artifacts for the California Nebula, and if we measure its angular separation, we're down at about 20 degrees separation. What was the angular separation on the day that I took the first HA data for the California Nebula. That was back on October 30th at 1 o'clock in the morning. So if we turn the clock back here to October 29th and then come forward to about 1.15 a.m., we are here. Now we need to turn the angular measure off in order to have control back over on the screen here. But turning that off, we can scroll around and find the moon. There's the moon. And here's the California Nebula right here. So let's turn the tool back on. And I can measure from here all the way out to the moon. And you can see we're at 47 degrees. So at 47 degrees angular separation on a full moon, the HA data seem to be fine. But if I'm closer than 20 degrees, certainly uh, the, the, the HA data are fairly flawed. And in fact, I had to throw out all that data that I took 
that night. Since I've thrown out the data that uh, I took on, on this night when I was too close to the moon, the now stacked set of data that I have, and I'm almost finished with this project, uh, is a is a bit more palatable. The flats properly compensate for the off-axis guider shadow. They would not compensate for the off-axis gui guider shadow in this uh, scenario because the nature of the illumination was so different from the nature of the illumination that I have when I'm taking a an outdoor t-shirt flat but under very subdued and uniform light conditions. Here there's a significant uh, illumination coming from one side and also po possibly creating some reflections that are simply not reflected in the uh, flat file that I'm using to calibrate these images. So had to throw out these data and at least I have a decent looking uh, set of HA data that I can start working with. Let's go take a look at the lessons learned. So I might have thought going in that I was going to be fairly safe with using narrow band filters while the moon is out and by and large that's a true statement however it turns out that angular separation is a pretty uh, significant variable that you need to consider amount of angular separation will depend on the focal length that you're imaging at uh, probably for focal lengths near 400 millimeters which is what i was using uh, when i took those pictures with my gt81 about 385 millimeters. Uh, the 40 degrees of separation seems to be okay, but 20 degrees of separation is clearly not enough, and it left me with some artifacts that I couldn't correct for using the flats. Uh, so that means that somewhere between 20 and 40 is kind of a point where you don't want to be any closer to the moon. You might expect some less sensitivity uh, with a narrower field of view. For example, a longer focal length is going to focus down and keep your edge of your view away from the high illumination so I'm, I suspect but haven't seen this yet uh, that you'll see you can get closer in angular separation to a bright moon with narrow band filters if you have a longer focal length but if you have a shorter focal length that 40 degrees may not be enough to guarantee that you get good images. Uh, I found now that I'm going to have to start using Stellarium's angle measure plug-in tool which is pretty it's pretty handy uh, as part of the image session planning uh, when the moon is near full illumination. Okay I just thought I'd share these results with you guys. Clear skies. Talk to you later.